Welcome, welcome Sagittarius and soulmates. Let's see what's in store for you guys in the month of April. As we enter through the doorway to the Kashi Akashi Records. Let's see what you are awakened to. What present gift for Sagittarius and soulmate in the month of April 2000? What present gift present gift for Sagittarius and soulmate? Okay. Mm. Okay, so I see that unrequited love has been on your mind, Sagittarius and soulmate. What will emotionally, energetically, wow, okay take place okay what is a karmic blessing karmic blessing for Sagittarius and his soulmate Male, female, soul in the month of April. Okay. So, Sun, Moon, Rising, Sagittarius, and Soulmate. What you're trying to mend and really heal is unrequited love. As a key, unrequited love in my mind's eye made me look at not the love that you have for the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever relationship that resonates with you, but unrequited love that you have first within you. I never looked at this before, but looking at this book, this present, when it says unrequited love, there's no one next to her. Usually when I used to speak of unrequited love, I spoke as if an intimate relationship between someone that you love and vice versa. But then I would have seen another person here in order to have anybody come into our lives, we are what we attract. So even though this beautiful woman, and she's very beautiful, looks like she has herself together. She knows her profession. She knows what she creates and how it infect and impacts others. Yet, her eyes tell the story of sadness as if not being appreciated for who you are and what you have accomplished. I see that she can be one of her talents in this book is a florist. A person that knows how to not only decorate flowers, but know even the meanings behind each flower. And based on the occasion, how to help another person bring in that love that they want. This applies to you, Sagittarius or soulmate. How do you see yourself inside? It cannot always be sadness. You had to see yourself as serene, sovereign, 
successful, succulent. Yet, how would I know based on what is covered? You help so many others in love, but when it comes to you getting that in return, it's unfulfilled. The scales are not balanced equally. You give more, yet you get less. You keep for yourself, others feel like you're not giving at all. How can you mend this concept in the now? By tapping into the medicine man and medicine woman. Medicine man and medicine woman are the shamans of society. They are, again, this is in your element, shamans, letter S. You are a student, yes, but you are studious when it comes to studying the heart Studying the mindset, how you get your philosophies, where do they come from, Sagittarius and soulmate? Your philosophies had to be something physical that you had to either experience or witness. Look within your dreams. This symbol is known as a dream catcher. So any dreams that have been blocking you, using this particular object will web in not only the negative, but it will give out what has been blocking you. Look in your dreams. Even the medicine that you look at. How do you look at medicine? When we take medicine, we are taught that it heals us, right? But how do we know that the medicine does heal? We had to experience in the world trial and error, meaning we realized some plants helped us and some didn't, based on who stayed alive and who didn't. We knew based on now that we have beautiful doctors, it didn't start off beautiful. It took a lot of practice. Imagine being a doctor and didn't know what tools were made of and how to name each tool based on how you operate, how to sterilize, what does sterilization mean? This meant when you had to heal yourself first, it took a lot of trial and error. Do not blame yourself for that. That's what makes you successful, is that you are able to step out into the unknown to find the known mysteries or to find the known facts just not for yourself but for others so if there's something that you want to mend make right again or just to make right in your life look at what do you want to mend why and how can you make that happen in a healthy way for you and another because this ties into our concept or perception of Greco and Roman around that time period, that's when taking knowledge or understanding knowledge from Egypt, Africa, Sumeria, Mesopotamia, Pakistan, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, all these locations before we even got to Greece and Roman. You had to travel to take the lessons that you have learned when it comes to what is love and how does it lead in lessons? How does it lead for us to understand how to alleviate or make it logical? In order to understand the masculine and feminine, First, we had to acknowledge it in Greek or Roman. That's why we, you see a lot of mythology in Greek or mythology. Um, a lot of those mythologies stem, if you look, I, again, this is something that I know, but don't know at the same time. I know it in the concept of what history has showed, 
but I do not know if what we have learned in history, is it really accurate? So I can only tell you a snippet of what I do know. And you can check this out. You can Google it or research it in whatever way you see fit. How we learned about men and women and how we are complex creatures or complex beings is by where we have originally came from. All of us came from Africa. And yes, we had to move around. We have so much of this planet, why would we stay in one place? Yes, it might have took a catastrophe or uh, something tragic for us to be nomadic. Yet, what we have already known when it came to Madonna, the Black Madonna, Jesus, um, Mary, um, disciples, a lot of times Jesus' disciples were family members. Besides his actual friends was actually part of his family line. Line that he were that by blood and what was birthed into. We have our, our own family and then our immediate family, what we, the man and the woman. Meaning your mother is your immediate. Your father is also immediate to you, yes. Yet they have their own last name that they brought together as one. So even those concepts, if we relate it to even Egypt, Zeus was no different in Greece compared to the pharaohs of Egypt. Hera, his wife, is no different than the pharaohs because pharaohs were not just men. They were also women in Egypt. Yet, we will look at the masculine and the feminine, but it takes two to even make us. Imagine God as an energy or energy, an energy or entity. And this planet, imagine planet Earth being of dark matter, barren, had no life, no light yet. Joining the dark and the light together to birth things on this planet. That's in my mind's eye to give you as an example. This is what you're thinking about in, or what can be of your thought. Like, why is it that we experience unrequited love? Why do we experience it outside of ourselves? Well, even though we, I know for me, when I wanted to realize this, I really had to look at myself. Not to blame myself, but to understand how do I bring off this energy of unrequitedness? How do I bring off the energy of not taking good care of myself and not giving myself love? If we did, then our, our own cup would run over to the point where whoever's in my life would want to give me that same amount that I give to myself. So that's what you're starting to see. And you're trying to mend those matters and find resolutions for them. As you're doing that in the month of April, you're going to get an opportunity in your atmosphere to demonstrate what you have researched and what you have Googled in that understanding of where does unrequited love, where's the root of it. So... You have a brilliant new idea in regards to this concept or in regards to how to make relationships outside of ourselves more, not just lucrative, but more remarkable. So you have inspiration around you to align yourself with. Seeing the truth of a situation what is the situation that you have witnessed when it comes to unrequited love? What are you not re reacquainted with when it comes to who you are? What is those aspects of yourself that you keep suppressed 
and you oppress yourself because of the feelings that you have for yourself. Now it's time to release them, relinquish them. You have a challenging beginning, but this challenging new beginning is going to bring in the two of water. So not only will your cup be overfilled, but whoever that you want in your world as a lover, as someone to love and to receive love will also have their cup running over. Where you won't have to feel like you have to fill their cup by taking some of your emotions and your your love to give to them. You want it where it's equal. Two. Two. Equal. Not unequal. You don't want that. So, if this is in regards to an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, because Sagittarius' opposite sign is Gemini. So, opposites do attract. But at the same time, when we think of opposites, we think of someone that is not like us, but we connect to them. We find out that opposites, that the only thing that's opposite could be something physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever the case may be. However, you and this opposite are very similar to the point where even by astrology, your opposite is just like you. It's just a mirror image of who you are. So if you wonder why you attract the opposite sex or the opposite of who you are, it's because this person shares the same principles and same philosophy as you. They just may speak of it or emotionally express it differently than you. But the end result is usually the same. So, if this is an air sign, or this can be a Taurus second house that has air in a chart. This can be also a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces that has air in their chart. And they're very grounded. So, they have air, water, and earth in their chart. So you you definitely can't stay bored with this person. If this is you, Sagittarius is soulmate, you're tapping into your opposite element, which is air. You're gonna start communicating what really does matter to you, what you do want, what do you want, what are the things you want? Not what you need, what do you want? That wanting will show you why you need it. And from that, then the universe can bring into your world a person that can not only teach you, but a person that you can practice this with on what you want. And whoever this person is, and this is also you, you're seeing that you're going to understand what is your identity. What is your, like an identification card? You know how when we all have our identification card, it tells our name, our height, our birthday, right? But it also tells your physical makeup. It tells your height. It tells your eye color. In some way, it's like an introduction to you before a person actually sees you. So when people ask, oh, let me see your ID, they could physically see you. But again, it's like your own age. You can be over 21, right? Yet how you physically look don't look like a person of the 21 year. It makes no sense, right? Like, okay, I'm 21, so I should be able to go in anywhere. That is true by universal age standards however by the standards of the physical makeup that can be irrelevant because yes you can be 21 but then you can look like you're 12 you can look like you're 12 not saying you are so again you're looking at this concept and you're saying well what is my ego how does my ego influence me? How does my ego allow me to embrace new changes in my life? And you're going to see that your ego, you want to have as a, as an even kilt, uh, some e equally yoked. You want your ego to be equally yoked. 
not unequally yoked because then like an egg we wouldn't be able to cook it right because it's not balanced it doesn't have the proteins and everything else that makes it that so so you're going to be seeing how to be more of the giver and receiver of what you do want in your life so a false sense of entrapment stop stop being in your in your your mind about how you want to be. Just simply be it. Being overly focused on material things. Material is going to come to you. You are the shaman. You are the chief of the community. You are the philosopher. Again, Greek and Roman. Would not be surprised you will happen to be one of the philosophers. Plato. Or if I wanted to connect your letter of your zodiac sign, which is Sagittarius, soulmate, to the letter S, maybe it's not Plato. Look into what Socrates talked about. Socrates and Plato, so many others, guess where they had to learn their path and their principles? They all had to go to Egypt. They all had to go to Africa. They knew that they came from the motherland, they may not have to, they may at that time period could not speak on it because it would have caused them to be exiled or to receive no love. But now from their writings and from their philosophies, we're able to see how that correlates to our changes in our life and those connections to even the philosophers that of the past life or the in past in history can help in this time period. So definitely Google or research Socrates. Where did he come from? Where did he learn his principles from? Where did he learn speech from? How to speak? How to even make a philosophy? And you'll notice that negative fear-based thoughts were there not to be a nag to you, but it was to Yes, yeah, to nag a little bit, yeah, to nag you, to have you see or feel, again, to feel what you want to find out. So if you have any negative or fear-based thoughts, rather than shun it away, look at it. Look at it. If you have to write it down, if you have to record yourself in what you feel, then you could go back and see how that correlates to your the way you walk in life or the way people will probably perceive you. Okay? Because whatever you find is going to be medicine to others. It's like chicken soup for the soul. It's like you're going to be able to heal or make people understand how special they are based on your research of you. So, Five of air. It's been a lot of changes you've been making. And you might feel that it's unwise. But learn what you can from the situation. Whatever's in your atmosphere that you had to take the lead on, learn from it. Whatever you learn of this conflict will show you not only how this was made as a calculation. Like, from you taking the lead... Or from you loving yourself, everyone around you is going to notice something different because of your energy. Once you self-care and self-love yourself, again, the self, then some might say that's selfish. Some might say, oh, you don't care about me anymore. Some might say, oh, that's silly to even put that much investment in yourself in that manner. All these things are there to show you, one, really who the people in your life was supposed to be for you. And what you really do want in your life to be surrounded by. So, if you have a Leo that is showing you that how you're taking a lead is accurate keep going if this is you and you're stepping into the leo element within you and leading the the pack know that you're leading 
You're half human and half horse. Both beings go beyond what others see as borders, as boundaries that they cannot go towards. You not only go towards it, but you go through it. You go over leaps and bounds. So, review everyone's motives, including yourself. Review. Review. Yes, it says requited. Requited. Again, based on where I come from, I can even read this very differently. Look at your own motives. As you're looking at this, you're going to start taking real good perimeter of your world a lot more. You're going to look at the perception of your world, how you, the things that you already had as a want in your world, you're now going to start looking at the perception of that. Like, why did I want it this way? Why did I want this person to be this way? Why did I accept this person in this type of order? And from that, you're going to get more powerful intuition to ignite what caused you to be sensitive to certain subjects? What causes you to bring out your artistic nature and your friendly list to people in the world? A new person, again, this can be a water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, or an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, that has water in their chart. This person that enters, or this new person that enters your, your life, a relationship begins a new phase, meaning this person has already been in your world. And you might think that they're a, a page of water, right? They may come off as a rookie. They may come off as someone that is passive. They may come off as someone that is immature. But do know, they're there to show you something. They are a reflection of you in some way, shape, or form. The question is, how does that relate to you? How does this person really resonate and relate to you? Because it's going through a new phase. It's going to heighten your psychic ability to understand why do you take people in your life? Why do you take places? Why do you hold possessions to things? Because you're going to become the empress. That would explain why you had to experience the things you have experienced for the last 15 years or the last 15 months or even three years. This can have even affected you when you were three years old. Feeling unappreciated, feeling unloved, feeling unwanted, feeling abandoned. Being your own medicine man and medicine woman. Medicine man and medicine woman, meaning... You knew how to heal yourself because others didn't want to. You knew how and you know how to love yourself because others did not know how to. You know how to be your own me, myself, and I because you had a situation in your life where you had to be that way. Why? Because it has been preparing you to be an empress, to be that empire. Again, Aries or Taurus. You're, you're tapping into that element. So lavish abundance is going to come to you. So you don't have to think about the material, the material needs. It's going to come to you once you see how to align your masculine, feminine, and soul together, not separate. Give birth to your dreams. Whatever those dreams are, start directing them. Nurture yourself. Nurture yourself, nurture yourself, and then you would have others to nurture. Or from you nurturing yourself, then others will know how to nurture you based on how you nurture yourself. If you, for example, like to drink water with a little bit of pineapple in it, guess what? People that love you will witness that and say, oh, okay, I know what this person likes. I know what they want. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, when you say, oh, I want to get some water. Okay, cool. And all of a sudden, they give you water with pineapple. You're like, wait a minute. That's unusual. How did you know I like pineapple? Well, I watched you. They can only give you what you give yourself. So, how is this going to bless you, this information? 
Again, look at that Pisces. You're stepping into pioneership. You're going to become a philanthropist. One of your empress or empires is going to allow you to be a philanthropist for others, to be able to provide for others. But again, before you can do that, you have to have an equilibrium within yourself. So spiritually, you're going within to see the ultimate experience, which you have ultimately experienced throughout your life. Mentally, you got to trust your psychic knowledge. Again, you always wonder where your philosophy came from. Where does your principle come from? Your moral, moral principles come from. Your, even your character on how you tread the way is based on your psychic knowledge, your hidden power. And it's going to help you to result from the indecision of or about a person, place, or thing. From you tapping into your spiritual nature, the serving of others, again, that philanthropist serving of others will start to be seen. You'll realize from your actions that you're becoming more detail-oriented and you're doing what you must. Why? Look at that sixth house again. One plus five, sixth house. Virgo is all about what you give is what you're going to get back. What you allow is what is going to be abundant to you. So, again, you, you know what you have to do within your spiritual practice or your spiritual makeup. Then you're going to use that in the physical way in your actions. You're going to start seeing that you are a full-time job. You know and you'll start to realize how to serve yourself and do little at a time take your time you don't have to rush that would explain why being a page of water being of a, a uh, apprentice being your own apprentice is necessary do a little at a time why because behind the scenes the service to others is going to be what you're going to realize that you want to do and you're going to understand that what is good for us, what is good for us, in order for you to understand that us, take away that S, you only have you. What is good for you will allow you to understand what is good for us as people. And spiritually, behind the scenes, you'll know your work is worthy, is worth it, because your work is what you had to experience in the world. If this reading resonates with you, press the like button, share, and subscribe. If it does not resonate with you, that is okay. In the doorway, there are other Akashi records of other signs that may be of relevance to you. I think definitely uh, Taurus and Leo is a good place to start. Even Gemini. If you would like to donate to Kiki's Doorway, because I would love to make this more than just a place to learn the tarot. I also want to take this further in our reality to see what is being talked about. Is it and can it be relevant in other aspects of our world? And I would love to get that input from you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. Sagittarius and soulmate. We will see you on the other side.